What's up guys? Have you guys ever had a shorted cord on a power tool? The other day, my brother and I were on a mobile job fixing some dumpster gates and actually this particular grinder was having issues. It shorted out. But today I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to repair these tools. We have a few different issues with these. This one does not have a power cable. It got ripped out. This one, the end of the power cable, the prongs on the end of it were broken off by getting stepped on. And then this one, the cord is just shorted somewhere in here. Now these are all Bauer tools from Harbor Freight. So they're a little bit on the cheaper end, but I know and have had more expensive tools break like this. Pretty much all of them can have the same issue. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix it. I'm Justin Does What, and let's get into it. All right, so what we will need to complete this project will be some zip ties, some wire strippers, some wire snips, a big Phillips head screwdriver, a small Phillips head screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, a new power cord. I got this at Home Depot for around $12, but you could probably go to any of your local stores and find a two prong cord if that matches the cord that you are replacing. You'll know by the end of the power cord if it has two prongs or if it has three prongs, that's the cord you're looking for. You just wanna match it. But this just says on it tool replacement cord and it's going to have a hot and a neutral or a black and white or red or gray. So let's get this thing opened up here. We're going to just take our electric screwdriver here to make it easy on ourselves. And we are going to pull the screws out. Now I'm just going to set them in order so I know which way they went in here. The longer ones will be through the body here. And the smaller ones will be on the bottom of the handle here. All right, now that we have the screws out holding the body, we're gonna take our small flathead screwdriver and we are just gonna pry some of these pieces. You just wanna be really gentle. If it's got plastic, you don't really want to break the plastic, obviously, so just take your time and make sure you don't use too much force to separate the pieces. All right, now that we have this apart, it is a really good idea to take photos of the wiring so that you remember what direction it goes on the switch. So I'm just going to take a few photos here for reference. So I see that the hot is on this side and the neutral is on this side. So I'm gonna just take a few photos. All right, we'll set that off to the side and we're gonna pull this out and flip it over. And there's going to be a few screws holding the wiring in place. So we're just gonna take our small Phillips head screwdriver here and we are just going to release the wiring from the switch. Now there is a middle wire here, and as you can see, that is a part of the switching mechanism. We, it's a smaller size gauge, and we are not gonna be removing this one. We are only gonna be removing the two going to the power cord. So we pull out the hot and the neutral, and now we are going to take our Phillips head screwdriver here again, and we are going to pull out the clamp screws here for the cord. Now, this usually is one of the problems with these Bauer power tools from Harbor Freight is this clamp doesn't really do a great job clamping the wire, so it can get pulled easily and that's what creates the shorts on the end of the wire. You don't necessarily need a new cord. In this case we do because this power cord was stepped on and the prongs are missing here so it can't even be plugged in. We're pretty rough on the tools when we're out on the job. But you just want to 
but we are going to be replacing this cable completely. You could technically cut the ends of these and rewire it and hope that you got the short out of it and put it back in if you're in a bind. Maybe you're on a job and you need to get the job done and you're doing this repair on the job site, then it could be okay to do that. You just wanna be careful, obviously, cause you're doing electrical stuff, but make sure that you um, cut enough of the wire off in order to get the short out. So we're just gonna take off the housing here on the back end, this tube, and we're gonna take this cord. This cord is trash, so it's gonna go into the garbage. We're gonna set it off to the side though. We are going to open up our brand new cord here. Take the twist tie off of it here. And we'll just leave the other stuff on here for now. And we are going to take this absorption piece right here and we are going to feed it back through. The small end this side, the small end is where the wires are gonna go through and then come out on this end which clamps back down into the bottom piece here so we're just going to feed these wires through and put it through the cable a little bit here just to get it out of our way and we may have to shorten the end of these wires here i believe we will so as we saw before if the switch is this direction if you aren't sure just open up your phone and go to your reference photo and look at what direction it was. And so the hot, which is either going to be black or red, is going to be on my left. So I'm gonna just stick it in there a little bit and see how far it goes. It's These are way too long here, so we're gonna trim it down to about a quarter inch on each side. This is where our wire snips come to play, so we're just going to do this on the side over here because it's going to make a mess. Down to about a quarter inch. And we'll clean that up later. So if we were... So if we were just cutting the cables, this is where we would use our wire strippers and strip the end. We'll cut the end and then strip the casing off of it. But... We're just putting a new cable on and these are pre-stripped. So we are just going to stick them in there. So we're gonna make sure they're twisted up nice so they don't fray inside. And we are going to put the black side in first or the hot. And we are just going to tighten down the screw where it goes into. Now, again, this process may be different on different power tools you're working on, but the idea is generally the same. And then we're going to stick the neutral or white side in here and tighten it down. Just make sure you have it nice and tight and the wires are snug and there really shouldn't be too much wire hanging out. If there's any really, you should just trim it down to the right size. For this specific tool, it's about a quarter of an inch. I've done a few of these before because we've had this problem before, so I already know. Now this is an auto switch here for locking on the grinder, so we just need to make sure that that goes back into the right position here. Put it back down. Then we are going to take our cable here and line it up. Now, before we put this clamp on here, one thing I found out and I do on all of these repairs now is I'm going to take a zip tie and I'm gonna put it on this side. And this is going to prevent the wire from sliding in and out anymore. So we're just gonna zip tie this down and you can do this on just about any power tool. Hopefully there's a little bit of space right above the part that's keeping it from moving in and out. This other part that I said doesn't work as well. And we are just going to put that in there and that's gonna be a buffer. And we're also gonna put one down here on this once we have it in place. So we're not gonna do that quite yet, but we're gonna take our snips here and we are going to clean that up. 
and just make sure you're getting debris out of there. Take that out. All right, now we are going to put this cable clamp here and we're gonna put this back on. Now, be gentle that you don't strip out the screw hole here because again, we're just going into plastic. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here. All right, now that we have that in place, we're gonna put this little boot in on the other side here. Just make sure you slide it over. Be nice and gentle with it because this is going to, it's supposed to shock absorb a little bit. Actually, I tighten this down too much, so we're going to loosen it up actually just a little bit here. And hopefully get this bad boy in there. All right. Now it's lined back up. Let's put these back down. Switch is in place and just make sure all the wiring is back in here nice and snug so we don't clamp down the body back on top of it. And now we are going to take the body piece back, clamp it back on. And we have these in order so we are just going to put that piece back on there. And we're actually going to start with the long screws here because it looks like it's going to hold the rest of the body in place here. So you just want to make sure that the tool is nice and lined up before you do this so that we don't cause another stripped cord. And I'm just going to go down. Don't need to over tighten, but need to make sure they're snug, but just not over tighten it. All right. Just make sure that one's snug. Now we are going to put the small screw in here. Put the bottom pieces on. And then lastly, I'm gonna take this other zip tie here and I'm gonna put it at the very end of the tool. And I kinda of wanna put it out of the way of the grip so that my fingers don't hit it. So I'm gonna put it all the way up against the tool here. And then I wanna make sure it's kinda of snug, but this should prevent the cord from going back and forth this way, which was what is causing the cord to strip out in the first place. So I'm just gonna take that and cut it. And let's just make sure everything's tightened up here. Seems that way. All right. And we should be good to go here. It's pretty simple. We're just gonna take it and test it. Just be careful, plug it in. You know, if you're actually gonna test this on a piece of material, make sure you put on your face mask. We're gonna plug this in. All right. And let's see if it works here. Nice. It's that easy. Now you have fixed your tool for $12, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And instead of buying a whole new 60 to $80 tool, or if you're buying a more expensive tool, these could be in the hundreds of dollars. If this helped you out and you fixed any tools, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I like doing DIY videos and helping people save money. So make sure you follow along. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.